You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I'm reaching into the mailbox. Here is a, a question. So it starts, hi, Rick. I'll start off by saying what you probably hear day after day. I listen to your podcast all the time. Appreciate your wisdom so much. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. She says, I'd love to hear what you think about this. I have two kids who are in their first year of track and field, 10th grader, 8th grader. I've been amazed at how many of these young athletes are covered in KT tape. So this kinesiology tape. Uh, I was sounding like an old fogey and say, back in my day of my high school sports, we'd just stretch and put ice on it. Maybe friends, other moms talk about getting their kids compression socks to help shin splints, etc. As a personal trainer, it seems to me like they are hindering the development of muscles. It reminds me of a podcast where you talk about weightlifters not having core strength because they rely on belts or always working out with shoes and never allow muscles in their feet to work. What are your thoughts? This is one of my favorite sign-offs ever. Smilingly, I love that. Christy, P.S. I'm specifically noticing support and tape around knees uh, and down the shins. Well, Christy, thank you so very much for this question and the kind comments about the podcast. I appreciate that. But here's here's what we're going to talk about. Uh, KT tape is going to be different than the weight belt around the core. It's going to be different than... Uh, braces around the knees and the ankles because a lot of those things just don't let the muscles engage, but KT tape does. The question is really, um, what does it do, if anything? And so we're going to look at a few things here. Uh, One, here's just an overview by Renneker et al. 2018. Um, This is a systematic review called The Effectiveness of Kinesiology Tape on Sport Performance Athletes, uh, Abilities and Athletics, uh, in Athletes, sorry. So the objective is to establish the effectiveness of kinesiology tape on sport performance abilities compared to that of other tapes or no tapes with consideration of application methodology, time frame, and outcome measurement. So in total, 11 comparisons demonstrated significant effects. Two in favor of KT tape, which KT tape is a type of kinesiology tape. Uh, Eight in favor of Mulligan's tape. So, um, And Mulligan's tape is a type of tape and a technique, really. So Mulligan, I think, has their own tape brand, but it's really like their technique of taping that has been shown to reduce patellofemoral pain uh, syndrome to help with balance in older clients, but not healthy younger clients, um, and then little to no ability um, that has been found in ankle stability with that. But here you see that in um, uh, that that there were favorable outcomes with mulligan tape, and then one in favor of no tape whatsoever. So the conclusion, there's a lack of compelling evidence to support the use of this kinesiology tape to enhance the sport performance abilities based on this review. Now, in particular, you mentioned the knees. So I found a um, a systematic review on patellofemoral pain syndrome by Logan at all 2017 uh, in the journal Sports Health. And this is what they concluded. This systematic review supports knee taping only as an adjunct to traditional exercise therapy for patellofemoral pain syndrome. However, it does not support taping in isolation. So um, it seems to be supported if you're going to physical therapy, but uh, if you're not going to physical therapy, you're not getting treatment on it, and you just decide to tape yourself, then it doesn't seem to have much support. What about ankle instability? So you mentioned down the shins, certainly part of the ankles would be uh, seen a lot. So this is biz, nobody beats the biz. So biz, B-I-Z at all. 2022 kinesiology taping effects on sports performance and ankle function of athletes with chronic ankle instability, a systematic review and a meta-analysis. This is how it concludes. It is possible to conclude that KT 
uh, kinesiology tape provides a moderate stabilizing effect on the ankles of athletes of most popular contact sports with chronic ankle instability. Okay. All right. So there's moderate. It's moderate that it can support people with chronic ankle instability. Now, here's the thing. I don't know the amount of taping that was done. I don't know how much wrapping was done. I'm, I'm not sure what was done particularly in this study, but there's a moderate effect. What about shin splints? Gal at all 2022, efficacy of kinesiology taping on the management of shin splints, a systematic review. In conclusion, this review revealed that the efficacy of KT on shin splints remains not clear. Evidence that supports its effectiveness in individuals with shin splints is currently limited. Further studies. All right. Further studies going to be needed. Let me give you my opinion about the tape. Now, I use tape. I use it. Just I keep my, my glucose monitor on because I do jujitsu. And KT uh, tape, kinesiology tape, uh, whatever brand of that I use does a great job staying on and keeping my glucose monitor from being pulled out of my arm uh, as a diabetic. Um, it helps me. That's great. That's not why people get kinesiology tape. They get taped up. So here's my opinion. My opinion is that the tape lets you know that it's there. The tape lets you feel. You can sense when you start to make changes in movement to stability to range of motion because the tape gets stretched and it pulls on your skin and those mechanoreceptors let you know, let you notice that there's tape. And that way you can increase the stability. You can limit the range of motion. You can halt potentially questionable movements when you do something and you feel the tug on your skin to let you know the tape is there. That's, that's my opinion. I think that there's a place for it. Um, but kind of like a lot of the things that you you see in sports, I think it's going to be funny that we'll we'll go um, fast forward in the Olympics. I don't know three, four, five cycles, and then you kind of laugh at how everybody looked like an octopus in the last games because they had all of these suction cups that had been put on them and left bruises, or the scraping that had been done, or the tape that was put on them because none of that stuff's going to be used. And then you fast forward seven, eight, nine, ten 10 cycles. It'll probably just pop up all over again. Why? Because it works a little bit. Um, but sometimes you need things to do more than just work a little bit. You need people to believe they work and belief is a huge component of recovery. And so if there's something about that tape that people look at and they feel, and they can kind of say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting better. I don't feel as much pain. Then with placebo or not, they don't feel as much pain. Placebo or not, they're being supported. Placebo or not, there's something there to let them know that somebody's trying to take care of them. And y'all, that can make all the difference in the world on how good you feel about yourself, how good you feel about your performance, and how well you do when you leave that ther uh, physical therapy clinic and you start moving on into your athletic or your gym or your everyday endeavors. And sometimes that can just be helpful enough. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. Christy, thank you so much for the question. If y'all have questions for me, reach out to me. Hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie, or you can email me, rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.